The internet is full of bro science, fake knowledge, half information or propaganda. Your quest of reliable, authentic health information ends here. So subscribe this channel and hit the bell icon and you never have to go anywhere else ever again. So hi, this is Dr. Paramjeet. I am a consultant physician and a cardiologist in Yashoda Super Speciality Hospital, Nehrunagar, Delhi NCR. And today we'll be talking about uh, why people are getting more and more heart attacks these days and what can you do to uh, assess your risk and uh, to prevent uh, yourself or your family members uh, from getting a heart attack uh, in the near future, right? So how can you do that? And what is a heart attack? We'll be covering uh, the causes of heart attack and I'll be explaining you uh, what major risk factors which you are already um, might be doing in your life and might be having in your life which will put you in a major risk to get a heart attack uh, in future okay so <clears throat> let's understand when we talk about heart attacks we're basically talking about blockages in the blood vessels of the heart and heart is it's just a muscle okay it's just a muscle which has automated tissues it cannot stop if it stops basically you can you die so any muscle needs blood supply to work right so heart is a muscle and it pumps blood but that blood which it pumps does not uh, actually supply nutrients to the heart itself right there is another blood supply which is coming from the surface of the heart and which basically supplies uh, blood and nutrients to the heart muscles so basically there is a different blood blood vessels for the heart okay and these are called coronary arteries well name doesn't matter but the concept matters concept is that there are different blood vessels and such blood vessels they supply blood to every single organ of your body including your lungs your liver and your brain your skin every part so what exactly happens to you which leads to a heart attack so basically some people they blame the diabetes they blame cholesterol sometimes they blame smoking but all these are different things right what is the primary reason what is the main reason uh, which is triggered by all these conditions all these risk factors so you need to understand that all these uh, blood vessels are basically also made up of smooth muscles and they also have a tendency to contract and expand right that's how your body increases blood supply to their organs during exercise and reduces blood supply to some organs like skin in winters to conserve heat so basically what i'm saying is heart is a muscle blood supplying blood vessels are also muscles and there is an inner layer of that muscular circular or you can say uh, the blood vessel it's like a pipe and pipe will have an outer layer and an inner, inner surface basically so the main inner surface of this blood vessel the pipeline is uh, called the endothelium because it's inside so endothelium is the epithelium which is inside the blood vessels so what is the problem why some people have blockages in their heart some people don't some people have less blockage some people have more blockage what leads to this blockage the main reason is this endothelial injury okay this inner surface of the blood vessels of your uh, body of the it doesn't matter whether it is your heart it's your brain it's uh, kidneys it's your leg anywhere and there are like millions and millions of blood vessels in your body and one of the main organ is heart which cannot stop the other organs they get rest they can they can stop and do work but heart cannot stop so blood vessels have inner surface which is called endothelium and endothelium whenever the endothelium gets damaged endothelium we, we call it as an endothelial injury okay so endothelial injury is just similar to a scratch which you get when you fall from a bike or from a from a bicycle it's like a scratch so it basically peels off the protective layer of epithelium or the skin which you were call you you call the outer skin there is an inner skin so it peels off the skin and it leads to a little bit of blood leakage right just like reddish color comes when you get a scratch sometimes you can get drops of blood and then it stops you've seen it stops it clots and there are like uh, <clears throat> scabs or we what we call as a clot which form and there is a thick brown colored sometimes black colored layer which forms over there so that is the same thing which happens inside the blood 
inside the blood vessels right so inside the blood vessels whenever there is anything which causes endothelial injury there is injury and there is bleeding and there will be activation of all these clotting mechanisms platelets cholesterols fibrins and all these things which are which are meant to clot the blood go there and they stop the bleeding they stop the fill the injury and they fill the injury with cholesterol platelets other fibrins and they form something called as a plaque okay initially the plaque is small but whenever there is a plaque it's a sticky place i mean there is always a tendency for uh, more uh, the plaque to get bigger because whenever i like i said this this blood vessel has a tendency to uh, contract and relax it's not fixed and whenever there is an injury consider an injured blood vessels dilating consider that the injured blood vessel is dilating it's it's expanding obviously the tear the injury will expand obviously the injury will expand so the size of the injury will increase the endothelial injury size increases so does the size of the plaque increases because your body cannot allow your blood vessel to break right to burst if your blood vessel bursts you might die if it is a bigger blood vessel there will be internal injury you will not know where the blood is uh, you know going if it it will burst inside the brain you it causes a hemorrhagic stroke if it is some like inside the uh, burst inside the heart there is blood uh, uh, which gets accumulated around the heart then stops the heart so it's a dangerous thing so therefore there is a mechanism inside your body to prevent bursting of the blood vessel that's how it does okay so <clears throat> the main factor here is endothelial injury so who causes this endothelial injury and these all factors which we basically say the smoking smoking the smoke has more than 7000 chemicals out of which like at least one uh, few hundreds are carcinogens they are cancer producing um, substances and smoke by itself uh, increases inflammation inside your body and what is inflammation inflammation is like cytokines are basically the army and police and other people right obviously imagine if you have uh, a crowd of army and police people outside your house and they are angry or they are fighting the enemy or whosoever obviously there will be some damage to the boundary of your house right same can happen same thing happens whenever there is any inflammation and whenever your body is fighting any infection there is collateral damage of whatever the area whatever the reason the fight is going on right same way if the, if you smoke if you regularly smoke or uh, then there is increased amount of inflammation in your body whatever is usually happening in a general person smokers have more inflammation so they have more number of endothelial injuries and over a period of time their elasticity of those arteries they reduce so when the elasticity is reduced and the artery stretches there will be a bigger tear there will be a bigger uh, endothelial injury there will be a bigger plaque so smokers have bigger plaques they have more chances of their blockages they have more chances of heart attack that's how it happens so the more you smoke the larger and you can say the bigger amount of risk you have right the less you smoke the less amount of risk if you don't smoke obviously that particular risk reduces that does not mean person who does not smoke will never get a heart attack because this is not the only reason right this is not the only reason your endothelium can get damaged your boundary of your house can get damaged there are so many things right and <clears throat> there are diabetes high sugar if it stays inside your blood obviously it's going around in the blood vessels right if it stays inside the blood it is it causes inflammation by itself high amount of sugar if it stays inside your uh, blood vessels it causes inflammation if that person smokes double inflammation right and if that third person has you can say high blood pressure that means inside the blood pressure inside the blood vessels is high that means whenever there will be a crack there will be a little bigger crack obviously if there is a pressure is high right so high blood pressure increases these endothelial injuries diabetes increases endothelial injuries uh, smoking increases blood endothelial injury obesity obesity basically puts a lot of stress over your body if you are 10 kg 20 kg overweight right your body is always carrying that load of 20 kg over your over your heart over your body and you have you will have more higher blood pressure you will have higher body mass you will have higher pulse rate you will have more uh, <clears throat> cholesterols because all these are a part of metabolic syndrome basically which we call as a uh, the, the combination of uh, obesity and uh, 
the waist circumference in activity right and the third biggest thing is uh, what you call as a i haven't uh, mentioned cholesterol because there was a time when people used to blame cholesterol just the cholesterol because why because wherever there is an endothelial injury who is going there and helping to you know make the plaque it's the platelets the cholesterol the fibrins and we need the platelets because who will stop the injury which is happening outside the body if we don't have platelets so people think okay we need platelets we cannot reduce platelet count or else there will there can be bleeding so we can reduce cholesterol so if that is above the normal range you know if you have very high cholesterol obviously we should keep it in the normal range or in the lower side and that's why people give you cholesterol medicines they view diet and the best way to control cholesterol is diet and lifestyle exercise eating a lot of fruits fibers salads right so but still if you have a, a very high cholesterol medicines can be given should be given for some time but that does not mean that if you control cholesterol plaques will not happen they will still happen because even if there is less cholesterol and there is bleeding inside there is endothelial injury your body has to seal it your body has to make a plaque less cholesterol maybe there will not be a huge plaque but there will be plaque all right so if you keep the cholesterol in control maybe a little risk reduces maybe not because if you have a less amount of cholesterol still you do smoking or diabetes and all other bad things still a lot of injuries can happen still you can give, develop a lot of plaques and a bigger bigger plaques so cholesterol is not a major factor it was thought to be in the past but now it's not okay but still the cholesterol is a primary thing which you should check regularly if your cholesterol is very high obviously you're not having a good diet and lifestyle that is a marker of that if you have a good lifestyle your cholesterol will be in control so to assess your lifestyle you should do cholesterol test and if it is really very high specifically the ldl cholesterols then definitely you should uh, change your lifestyle or if you if needed take some medicines for that so cholesterol is a factor not the biggest one because let me tell you when research was done if you see research right more than 65 or 70% of the heart attacks which have happened they had normal cholesterols right so that does mean that cholesterol levels are not actually the primary reason right so who is the primary reason those are the endo the factors which lead to endothelial injuries so who will lead to endothelial injury any kind of disbalance imbalance any kind of restlessness any kind of issue which leads to more inflammation in your body including covid including viral infections if there is a vi people heard during covid during uh, <clears throat> uh, the higher amount of inflammation the more amount of clotting was there people associated covid and even the vaccine with clots heart attacks and strokes so yes any kind of inflammation increases your risk of um, plaques so these are the factors then there are many more factors which keep on adding over the period of time like currently just a few uh, a few months so we can say back uh, sleeplessness insomnia was also added or lack of sleep was also added as a as a factor a big factor for heart attack so if you don't rest properly if you don't take proper sleep then that increases inflammation inside your body increases inflammation in the blood vessels increases endothelial injury increases the plaque increases the chances of heart attack so good sleep is needed good diet is needed good lifestyle is needed and if you are obese if you are overweight if you don't exercise if you have a sedentary lifestyle that itself is one of the biggest factor sedentary lifestyle is the key reason behind diabetes behind obesity behind high blood pressure behind many many diseases so the factor which starts because sedentary lifestyle starts like 5 years or many years prior to the onset of all these diseases or many 2 3 years prior to the onset maybe you can say so if you are having any of these if you are not exercising regularly if you are obese if you are smoking if you are having diabetes and the bigger thing is family history genetics is also one of the big factors genetics is so important that if you or your father mother your parents or their parents from your mother side or father side if they had a heart attack then you have a risk of getting a heart attack around or earlier the you know ask the earlier than them if they got a heart attack any of them got a heart attack at 60 years of age 
then you have a risk of getting a heart attack at 50 years of age or 50 to 60 between that time because the environment is getting bad right uh, people who don't smoke and live in metro cities they inhale so much pollution so much polluted air that the inflammation inside the body is rising then people are concentrated on earning their jobs and their deadlines not on their health not on their diet right so we need to we need to understand relax and step back and look for what we are doing wrong in our lives if you don't do that then you never know what you are you know where you are headed you might be doing something wrong or there might be some insulin resistance or high sugar going on or maybe high cholesterol going on inside your body from years if you haven't tested then you will not get any symptoms right high blood pressure uh, borderline high diabetes cholesterol levels if, if they are high they will not produce any symptoms zero symptoms you will feel just sometimes you'll feel weakness sometimes you'll see okay I'm not able to sleep I'm not able to concentrate but you don't get any major symptom right so the only thing which you can do is reevaluate your lifestyle and do checkups and then see if you have any history of heart disease in your family then it's very important for you to do these checkups right to be connected with a good doctor with a good cardiologist regularly consult a doctor right and you can regularly yearly basis you can do you no know, tests health checkups so that your body uh, cholesterol levels sugar levels blood pressure heart uh, compliance is under control you can check your CRP levels whether the overall inflammation in your body is under control so if any marker is is abnormal it suggests there is something wrong you should even know even if your RBC count is high your red blood cells counts are high your platelet counts are high all these can lead to increased number of clots being produced in your body many infections are there which are regularly coming including recurrently coming variations of COVID can, which can lead to increased amount of clots in your body right maybe if 100 people even if it is mild a viral infection not even even if it is not COVID some other infection might increase the risk of clotting right even if one person out of 100 gets increased risk of clotting it's a huge number right one person out of 100 one percent is also huge I mean there are millions of people in the world right who are not taking care of your body of their bodies so where do you stand have you done a health checkup, a cardiac health checkup in the last maybe one year, two years? If not, you are ignoring your health. If not, you are ignoring your health. Do you have an exercise routine? Do you sleep well? Do you drink enough water? Being dehydrated is basically putting your body at a higher level of inflammation, right? Whenever there is some fire, you have to extinguish it with water. Right? Whenever you feel hot, your body demands water. It, it, it signals your brain that go and drink water. When you are thirsty, uh, when you feel thirsty, you are already dehydrated. Right? So ideally, a person should not feel thirsty. He should drink that much amount of water. And it depends on the person's activity, on the temperature of that area, on the person's body mass. So anywhere between 3 to 4 liters of liquids, any liquid are required for a person throughout the day. Some can be water, some can be any kind of juice, milk, tea, coffee, everything included. So, you need to, we all need to understand the concepts of human body, which is not being taught to us in schools. Ideally, it should have, right? It should have. I mean, this is so important, right? This is what determines whether or not we will have a heart attack in the next 10 years, whether or not our mothers and fathers will get a heart attack in the next 10 years, right? So, it's very important for you to reassess your lifestyle and find out if there is one factor in your life which can increase inflammation or endothelial injury in your in your body right so let's understand let's revise what are the causes of endothelial injuries what are the causes of building plaques uh, one most important is your genetics right so if you have it you will get it i mean if you have it in your in your family there is no way of preventing it i mean you can push it away 10 years, 20 years by proper lifestyle, but you will definitely get uh, a heart attack, right? If you have a heart attack, history of heart attack in your family, then only thing you can do is live a good life so that you die of some other reason, not heart attack, right? That's you can do. That's what you can do. So, but genetic predisposition is a big factor. So, make sure that 
you ask your family and re-inquire whether anybody had a heart attack if yes then you are at risk that means you cannot ignore your health it means <clears throat> you need to get a health checkup every year which needs a heart evaluation including echocardiography or and ECG and TMT treadmill test right and cholesterol levels CBC ESR CRP inflammatory markers liver kidney all thyroid everything can be done but these are the important things then you should take at least seven hours of sleep six hours is barely minimum bare minimum passing marks nobody wants to be at the passing mark level of health why do you want to be at the passing mark level you should be at optimum health right at the best health for the best health you need seven to nine hours of sleep seven is perfect six is bare minimum five is bekar useless i would say it's not um, enough for a person well some people can it adapt to five hours sleep but they will not really uh, know what they are missing they might get delayed reflexes delayed judgments they might get easy infections they might get um, more um, higher number of um, inflammatory markers in their body so there are side effects of things and that's why recommendations are made so there are uh, only a handful of things which you need to make sure that you are doing good sleep a lot of water right so much so as your urine should be white or whitish right most of the time one a few times maybe it comes yellow but if it is dark yellow if you are thirsty all the time you are not drinking water you are not drinking enough fluids you are dehydrated right and then you need to do your health checkup and you need to start exercising it's a simple thing sleep uh, drink water exercise every you can say every week the recommendation says so if you exercise minimum amount of exercise which you need is two and a half hours a week of moderate exercise and if you do vigorous heavy exercises running kind of exercises then you can do only one and a half hours a week 90 minutes a week in one week that's not too much that's very less so that's a minimum exercise which you need to do but ideally you should do half an hour every day maybe one hour every day you can give one hour to your body every day and you can you can play sports you can go for swimming you can do horse riding you can do any kind of thing which you want you can do any sports badminton cricket anything which you want you just make sure that your body is getting some exercise for half to one hour right and then drink a lot of water and then get a good sleep and then you can concentrate on earnings right you have to earn to live that's fine right we all are here to earn money but the priority is health and safety right what's the point of earning money just to give to the doctors or the hospitals doctors don't really get so much i mean all right so the point here is <clears throat> that there are things in your hand and there is something called as natural bypass also what is that see let me take an example of army uh, people right so <clears throat> you must have heard or seen many times uh, the soldiers in army they uh, they regularly drink and smoke and they exercise right and they live in extreme conditions they ex sometimes they live in um, they have to stay there for months or weeks but the point is they don't really uh, get a heart attack during the army uh, during their you know the service ages never right they a very uh, rare rarely they might be some uh, you know one out of a million person can might be getting but ideally they are uh, they are exposing your their body to so much smoke and toxins and other things but the one thing which they do is vigorous exercise and regular exercise so what does that show us that shows us that your body right it's just like exercise is just like you know the the cleaning process which goes on in your house after a good huge party right if you do a you know if you party every week and you don't do uh, cleaning in your house you won't be able to live in at your place after a, a few days or few weeks right but the more you party the more cleaning is required the more heavier people cleaning is required same thing exercise what does exercise do it basically increases your heart rate your blood pressure blood flowing in your kidneys which basically flushes out the toxins your blood flowing through your liver detoxifications and uh, it induces thirst you drink a lot of water induces sleep you sleep well induces uh, hunger you eat a lot so exercise is one factor which which allows you to enjoy your life 
right if you really want to enjoy your your life you want to drink sometimes you want to go out have some outside food then yes you need to exercise also and regularly the more you exercise you, we have seen people who are running marathons at the age of around 80 90 i mean people who are exercising they have a great physique even at 100 so having a physique at 80 90 100 these are examples of what exercise can do to your body right and regular exercise is very important especially after the age of 40 so important regular physical and strength training so even to maintain your muscles right to maintain your muscles to maintain your bone strength so that you don't fall break your bones in the later life right so regular exercise is so important we don't do that right we just do that in our 20s and then forget about everything in our 30s after marriage after children we are only considered you know only worried about our time in the in the offices and our time with our friends right that's it and so that's not how things work that's not good that's not healthy so you guys everybody need to think back what wrong you are doing then there is uh, exercise is very important and <clears throat> uh, there is one more thing which i wanted to uh, talk about was outside food right so we have we have just mentioned a few uh, risk factors mind well there can be 10 more risk factors including if you are living besides the radiating kind of a factory that the radiations from the factory the chemicals from the factory the the adulter if you are eating adulterated food if you are not having good quality of if you are not drinking good quality of water if you are not having i mean there are so many things which can damage your body right there are so many uh, issues which can come and right now uh, these are the basic things which i am saying which are documented which which are easily controllable there are many things which you don't you might not know which you we cannot control but these are the things which you can and <coughs> eating outside is also very big factor when you eat outside or consider this if you have a if you have your own restaurant or so and you are giving them a healthy food it will and and somebody else is using a lot of butter a lot of high um, heat right what does high heat do because you you might have seen the restaurants have big stoves right our home stoves are uh, very small and the restaurant stoves are big big so it produces so much a big flame and the uh, food is cooked within minutes and that high heat it basically burns the surface of the food sometimes uh barbecue burns the surfaces blackish uh, including the whatever you barbecue what does that do it increases the production of trans fats the higher amount of heat increases the production of trans fats okay so this trans fats are very tasty that's why we like restaurant food more than our household food because restaurant food are cooked with more oils more butters and more heat that's why there is a higher amount of trans fats inside the restaurant and many times msgs and other uh, food additives are used so that your food just tastes very good but they are not really healthy right it it might be okay to eat once in a while once or twice a month but not reg- if you are eating regularly outside then again you are putting your body at a risk of higher amount of inflammation higher amount of endothelial injury which can lead to problems over the period of time so these are very important points which you need to understand and take note okay and look into your life and your life of your loved ones and then reevaluate what you are doing wrong where you need corrections Uh, as far as your heart is concerned your blood pressure your sugar your cholesterol get them checked every year and consult a good doctor and be connected with a family doctor so these are the important things which i need to tell you